Read updates in Chinese. President Trump named Vice President Mike Pence his point person to coordinate the government's response to the coronavirus, expressing confidence that the United States would prevent a widespread domestic outbreak of the coronavirus. Mr. Trump's announcement, at a White House news conference, came after two days of contradictory messages from government officials about the dangers posed to Americans by the virus, which first emerged in China and has infected more than 81,000 people globally, killing nearly 3,000. He also expressed confidence that scientists would develop a vaccine, but he provided no details. We're very, very ready for this, he said. Earlier in the day, the president condemned the news media, accusing journalists of making the situation look as bad as possible even as government health experts warned that the coronavirus threat in the United States was only beginning. Alex M. Azar II, the Health and Human Services Secretary, confirmed another American case of the virus on Wednesday, bringing to 60 the total number of infections in the United States. New coronavirus clusters across Europe and the Middle East more infections in Iran stoking fears about an uncontrolled spread. Global market jitters and warnings that the epidemic will reach the United States. A toxic political climate in Washington complicating the public health challenge. That worrying drumbeat frayed nerves across the world on Wednesday even as the pace of the outbreak seemed to be slowing in China, where most cases have been. For the first time, more new cases were reported outside China than inside according to the World Health Organization. Chinese officials on Tuesday reported 411 new infections, in the rest of the world, the number was 427. The total number of cases globally has now reached 80,980 and nearly 3,000 have died. South Korea, with the largest outbreak outside China, saw a nearly 30% jump in cases, to more than 1,200 and an American soldier there tested positive. In China, the authorities cautioned that the falling infection rate might be only a temporary reprieve, and the government is struggling to restore its reputation, battered by the epidemic. In the European Union, new cases were recorded in Austria, Croatia, France, Germany, Greece, and Spain. Most were tied to Italy where the authorities have been struggling to contain an outbreak that has infected at least 400 people most of them in the north near Milan. Hotels in Austria, France and the Canary Islands of Spain were locked down this week after guests tested positive for the virus or were suspected of having it. The steps to limit contagion differed from place to place, but large group gatherings were often the first things to be cancelled where the virus had been detected. As the American health authorities braced for an outbreak in the United States, the Trump administration came under criticism from both Democratic and Republican lawmakers for contradictory statements on the severity of the crisis, a lack of transparency, and seemingly lax preparations. The virus has infected more than 81,900 people in China and 44 other countries. Saudi Arabia on Wednesday temporarily barred Muslim pilgrims from entering the country to visit the holy cities of Mecca and Medina as it tries to slow the spread of the coronavirus, a stark illustration of the fear the epidemic has stirred. The Saudi royal family derives much of its stature in the Islamic world from its status as guardians of the holy sites, and it very rarely closes them off. The Saudi response contrasts with that of Iran, which has kept its pilgrimage sites open, despite a significant coronavirus outbreak there and evidence that people who visit Iran have spread the virus to many other countries. Each year, millions of Muslims make a pilgrimage to Mecca, or Umrah, which can take place at any time of year, the Hajj, the pilgrimage to Mecca that all Muslims are expected to make at least once, takes place in a specific part of the lunar year, which this year falls in midsummer. Many Muslims also visit the mosque in Medina that was established by the Prophet Muhammad. The government is suspending entry into the kingdom for the purpose of Umrah and visiting the Prophet's mosque temporarily, the government-run Saudi press agency said. It said the government had also blocked tourists from entering from countries where the spread of the virus is a danger, a term it has not yet defined.
Brazil's health ministry said on Wednesday that a 61-year-old man who recently traveled to Sao Paulo from Italy had contracted the coronavirus. Updated February 26, 2020. The first known case in Latin America, it comes as Brazil is in the midst of Carnival, a hugely popular festival that draws large crowds into close quarters for raucous street celebrations. Officials were scrambling to track down other passengers on the flight the man took to Brazil and to find others who had come into contact with him in recent days. The patient, who lives in Sao Paulo, had recently traveled for work to northern Italy, where an outbreak has infected at least 325 people. He sought medical help after experiencing a fever, cough and sore throat, according to health officials. Brazil's health minister, Luiz Henrique Mandetta, told the G1 news site that officials were hopeful that the virus would not spread briskly in Brazil, given the warmer time of year. The virus behaves differently in the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere, he said. Brazil is a country of younger people, and we're in summertime. This is a period that is not conducive for a respiratory virus. Iran's leaders continued to downplay the seriousness of the outbreak there on Wednesday, even as the number of cases in Iran or linked to it kept climbing quickly. The health ministry reported 139 cases and 19 deaths, up from 95 and 15 on Tuesday, and the government ordered a week-long closure of schools and cultural sites in 10 provinces. Experts say Iran's high apparent death rate suggests that it has far more infections than it has discovered or acknowledged. But President Hassan Rouhani said that the virus was coming under control, and he predicted that things would return to normal by Saturday, Iranian state media reported. He added that Iran's enemies were using the epidemic to further isolate the country. Iran has not closed pilgrimage sites that draw millions of Shiite Muslims to the city of Qom, the center of the country's outbreak. On Wednesday, the cleric in charge of one of the most important sites there, the Fatima Maysuma Shrine, said people should keep visiting. Bahrain on Wednesday raised its case total to 26, and said all three new patients had just arrived from Iran as had some of the previous ones. Bahrain is one of several countries reporting infections in people who had recently traveled to Iran. Pakistan's health minister, Dr. Zafar Mirza, on Wednesday confirmed the first two cases of the coronavirus in that country, and said that one of them was a 22-year-old student who had recently returned from Iran. Pakistan closed its border with Iran on Sunday. Georgia reported its first case on Wednesday, also a traveler returning from Iran, who had entered the country through Azerbaijan. Citizens of Qatar and Kuwait who are in Iran will be evacuated, the Qatar news agency reported. And in Iraq, movie theaters, coffee shops and other public gathering places were ordered to close until March 7. The Education Ministry said that schools and universities, which have been on a winter break, would also remain closed until then. In addition, Iraqi citizens will be forbidden to travel to China, Iran, South Korea and a half dozen other countries, in the hope of preventing the spread of the virus. As the number of new coronavirus infections in South Korea soared on Wednesday, the U.S. military ordered all people who had come into contact with an American soldier who tested positive for the virus to isolate themselves in their homes. The 23-year-old soldier, one of nearly 30,000 U.S. troops based in the country and the first of them to be infected, is stationed at Camp Carroll in Wagwan, 12 miles from Daegu, the city at the center of South Korea's outbreak. South Korea reported 284 new cases on Wednesday, the largest single-day jump so far, as the authorities complete the testing hundreds of members of a secretive church in Daegu that has been hit hard by the virus. South Korea now has 1,261 cases, the largest outbreak outside China. The government says it is still unsure how the virus got to South Korea, but suspicions have been raised about the Shincheonji Church, which has members in Wuhan, China, which has the world's largest concentration of infections. In response to the growing crisis, the U.S. military in South Korea elevated its risk level to high on Monday, advising all troops to limit non-mission essential meetings and off-installation travel. At gates of American bases, 
assessment stations have been set up, with soldiers lining up for temperature checks and screening questionnaires. Colonel Edward Balanco, the Army garrison commander for the affected area, said the military was arranging grocery deliveries to those quarantined. On Tuesday, the United States and South Korea said they would consider scaling back joint military exercises after at least 13 South Korean soldiers were infected. The U.S. military in Japan sent out a notice on Wednesday telling all personnel there to avoid non-essential travel to South Korea. Transcript Store Log 39339 Final Instructional Video Narrator The best way to clean your skin is with soap, hot water, and plenty of elbow grease. Reporter What if we told you that you've probably been cleaning your hands wrong, and that science tells you so? It turns out there's not one, but two common, internationally accepted ways to clean your hands, one from our very own CDC, and another by the World Health Organization. So which of these two methods is better? Researchers now know. They enlisted doctors and nurses in a Glasgow hospital in an experiment. And what they found in a study published this month was that the WHOS method was microbiologically more effective than the CDC's. So, the WHO won. But here's the rub, the CDC's method for cleaning hands goes something like this. Demonstration The WHOS method is like so. Demonstration Rub palms together. Rub each palm, front to back over the back of the other hand, interlacing fingers. Twist palms, with fingers interlaced. Interlock your fingers and twist again. This time, backs of fingers against palms. Clasp your left thumb in your right hand and move thumb in circular motion. Still with us? Press your right fingers together and rub them in a circular motion on your left palm. Then switch. All right. You're done. Don't take it hard if it doesn't seem worth it. Although the WHO method got cleaner hands, only about 2-3 RDS of the study's doctors and nurses completed the whole thing, which took about 42 seconds to do. The simpler CDC method? Only 35. And this is important because you see, in hospitals, hand hygiene is dope. Excerpts of training videos. According to the CDC, some 2 million patients get hospital-related infections a year. And the CDC estimates that doctors and nurses clean their hands correctly only half the time they should. So follow-through might be just as important as microbiological effectiveness. While this study focused only on alcohol-based hand sanitizers, its author says that the WHO way applies equally well to washing your hands with plain old soap and water, something you can practice at home. Excerpts of training videos if the coronavirus appears in communities in the United States, as federal officials anticipate, what can you do to protect yourself and your family? Much of the advice from experts involves common sense, not very different from what you would do to dodge the flu or any other respiratory virus. Because Americans often disregard colds and flus, continuing about their ordinary business, there are people with symptoms in public places. Without apology, you should put distance between you and them. Six feet would be good, but even a little distancing is helpful. And do your colleagues a favor if you aren't feeling well, stay home from work. Another obvious way to reduce the odds of infection, wash your hands often. It's not super sexy, but it works, said Dr. Trish Pearl, an infectious disease specialist at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center. During the SARS epidemic, also caused by a coronavirus, but one that was much deadlier hand washing reduced the risk of transmission by 30 to 50 percent, she said. If it is not feasible to wash your hands with water, you can use a hand sanitizer, but check the label to be sure it contains at least 60 percent alcohol. The trademark of coronavirus outbreaks abroad are those ubiquitous face masks. But if you are healthy, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and Infectious Disease Specialists do not recommend face masks. Most surgical masks are too loose to prevent inhalation of the virus. If you are infected, 
however, a mask can help prevent the spread of a virus. Healthcare workers and people caring for sick people should wear masks. The most effective are so-called N95 masks, which block 95% of very small particles. Health officials in Nassau County, NY, said on Wednesday that they were monitoring 83 people in voluntary isolation for potential coronavirus exposure, but that there were no confirmed cases in the county or the state. Many of the people had recently been in China, while others had been in contact with such people, the county health commissioner, Dr. Lawrence Eisenstein, said in a news conference. About 175 people in Nassau County, which borders New York City, have been asked to self-quarantine for some period of time since the authorities started taking that precaution several weeks ago, he said. People in other parts of the country have also agreed to isolate themselves after traveling from places with coronavirus outbreaks. As of today, there are 83 people who are on our list of being removed from contacting other people, Dr. Eisenstein said. Officials are in communication with them every day, he said, and all have complied with the quarantine request. Five of the people have tested negative for the virus, and a sixth person's test results are pending. The people being monitored are asked to remove themselves from other people, including family members, and are checked every day for a fever or other symptoms. Andy Simone, the county's director for emergency preparedness, said that hospitals were prepared in the event that someone tests positive. But she added, there is no fear right now, we do not have a case in Nassau County. Germany's health minister, Jens Spahn, said Wednesday that new cases were confirmed in the country that cannot be traced to the virus's original source in China. This raised the troubling possibility that the virus might have been transmitted within the country itself. The disease is moving to a new phase in Germany, Mr. Spahn said at a news conference. The infection chains are partially no longer trackable, he said. About 20 cases of the coronavirus have been identified in the country, he said, but until now health officials had been able to trace those who became infected back to the virus's origins in central China or to hot spots in Italy. The authorities in Germany's most populous state, North Rhine-Westphalia, were trying on Wednesday to retrace the steps of a couple who contracted the coronavirus from a source they could not immediately identify. The couple had spent the previous two weeks the estimated incubation period for the virus taking part in normal, public life, said Carl Joseph Lonnen, the state health minister. That included attending a large carnival party and taking a brief trip to the Netherlands, he said. Dutch authorities and the hotel where the couple stayed have been informed. Nervousness about the spread of the coronavirus gripped Wall Street again on Wednesday, with an early rise in stock prices giving way to a third day of selling. The S&P 500 was down 0.4% at the end of trading, bringing its losses for the week to more than 6%. The day began with the S&P 500 increasing by more than 1.5% before giving up those gains. Market observers attributed the change in sentiment to comments from Germany's health minister that the outbreak had entered a more serious phase, because the coronavirus had been transmitted there. Bonds rallied, pushing the yield on the 10-year Treasury note to a record low for a second day. The price of oil also fell. Major markets around the world continued to drop, with investors reacting to reports of the coronavirus spreading across the globe. European markets fell more by than 1% on Wednesday, and Asian markets ended the trading day lower. Investors have been dumping stocks all week, seeking safer investments like government bonds, as the outbreak spreads beyond Asia. The coronavirus epidemic poses a new and serious threat to Europe's already diminished system of free movement across borders. For generations, Europe Union leaders have pursued and, to a great degree, realized a vision of a continent where not only would trade be seamless, so would travel. Eventually, 26 European countries including four that are not in the bloc signed on, allowing people to travel from country to country in what is known as the Schengen area without showing passports, or even being stopped at border crossings. But the idea has never been universally loved, right-wing and nationalist politicians in particular have opposed it.
Ireland joined the European Union in 1973, but has never joined Schengen, neither did Britain, a member of the bloc for 47 years until it left in January. Opposition to free movement surged with the migrant crisis of 2015. Many countries erected what were supposed to be temporary border controls, but five years later, some are still in place. As coronavirus outbreaks grow and multiply, calls for closing borders have grown louder. So far no country has taken that drastic step, but privately European officials have warned that could change quickly. On Wednesday, the European Union's top official for communicable diseases said that Europe needed to prepare more broadly for the kind of crisis that has hit northern Italy. Our current assessment is that we will likely see a similar situation in other countries in Europe, and that the picture may vary from country to country, said the official, Andrea Ammon, director of the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control. Two European hotels were on lockdown on Wednesday as coronavirus infections spread on the continent, and a third was quarantined for several hours. The authorities in Innsbruck, an Austrian ski town in the Alps, sealed off the 108-room Grand Hotel after an Italian employee there tested positive for the virus. The cordon was the second at a European hotel in two days, after Spain on Tuesday cordoned off the H10 Costa Adige Palace on the resort island of Tenerife after a guest, also from Italy, tested positive. Each of the infected Italians had recently visited the Lombardy region of the country. Though the virus originated in China, an outbreak in Italy has given it a foothold in Europe from which it has spread to at least five countries. Spain, Austria, Croatia, Switzerland and France all reported cases linked to Lombardy on Tuesday. In central France, the Ibis Center Hotel in Bonn was closed after a client from Hong Kong died during the night. The health authorities ordered that all 30 members of the guests group remain in isolation while tests were conducted. But the test's results on Wednesday afternoon did not show coronavirus, and the lockdown was lifted. Governor Andrew M. Cuomo of New York said Wednesday that the state would set aside $40 million in the expectation that the coronavirus would eventually spread to New York. He also said the state had begun planning for possible quarantines at homes, hotels, and hospitals. While there have been no confirmed cases of the virus in New York, the governor and the state health commissioner, Dr. Howard Zucker, warned that its spread to the state was inevitable. It is highly probable that we will have people in New York State who test positive, said Mr. Cuomo, noting that New York City is the front door internationally for many travelers. No one should be surprised when we have positive cases. The governor also said he would ask federal health authorities for permission to test patient samples in a laboratory in New York, rather than waiting several days for results from the CDC in Atlanta. State officials have already been taking precautions against the disease, asking about 700 recent visitors to China to voluntarily quarantine themselves, even as customs and border protection agents continue to screen passengers at area airports. Individuals who have visited mainland China are judged to be of medium risk, according to the state health department, though it said none of those self-isolating individuals had exhibited symptoms of coronavirus. Reporting was contributed by Russell Goldman, Ko Sang Hun, Keith Bratcher, Austin Ramsey, Elaine Yu, Ben Dooley, Alexandra Stevenson, Kevin Granville, Mark Santora, Melissa Eddy, Christopher F. Schutz, Matina Steves Gridneff, Alan Uhus, Andrew Kramer, Anton Troyanovsky, Richard Perez Pena, Alan Finder, Gina Collada, Ernesto Londono, Noah Wieland, Maggie Haberman, Emily Cochran. Alyssa J. Rubin and Faleh Hassan.